Hey there, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're embarking on an intriguing journey into the world of medicine and neuroscience to understand what happens to your brain when sodium levels drop too low. It's a fascinating topic, so stick around till the end. But before we dive in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss our captivating scientific explorations. Let's get started. We often hear about the importance of sodium in our diet. It's not just for flavor. It's a critical player in maintaining our body's water balance and neurological function. And guess where it has a profound impact? Yes, your brain. Your brain cells, or neurons, rely on a delicate balance of sodium inside and outside for proper communication. But what happens when sodium levels go haywire? The normal range for blood sodium levels is 135 to 145 milliequivalents per liter. When sodium levels in your blood plummet below the normal range, a condition known as hyponatremia occurs. But what's the real story here? Well, brace yourselves because it's a brain teaser. Your brain is among the first to feel the effects. It can lead to confusion, headaches, and nausea, just to name a few. The real danger of hyponatremia lies in its impact on osmotic balance. So let's understand osmoregulation in our brain in little more detail. Osmosis is the process by which water molecules move from an area of lower solute concentration to an area of higher solute concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Sodium is the primary solute in extracellular fluids, including the bloodstream. In a state of hyponatremia, the concentration of sodium in the extracellular fluid becomes significantly lower than inside the cells. Water influx into brain cells with lower extracellular sodium levels Water tends to move into cells, including brain cells, to equalize the concentration. This influx of water brain cells can lead to cell swelling and expansion. The swelling of brain cells due to water influx is termed cerebral edema. Cerebral edema can lead to increased pressure inside the skull, a condition known as increased intracranial pressure. Increased ICP can cause compression of blood vessels, reduce blood flow to the brain, and potentially life-threatening consequences. This swelling of brain cells is known as cerebral edema. As brain cells swell, they put pressure on your brain, leading to seizures, coma, and in extreme cases, death. It's a dire situation that requires immediate medical attention. Symptoms of cerebral edema may include severe headache, nausea, vomiting, confusion, and changes in consciousness. Severe cerebral edema can result in seizures, coma, and, in extreme cases, death if left untreated. The good news is that hyponatremia is treatable. Here is a detailed overview of treatment of hyponatremia. Step 1. Identify and treat the underlying cause. The first step in treating hyponatremia is to identify and address the underlying cause. This could involve discontinuing medications that contribute to low sodium levels, managing underlying medical conditions, or adjusting fluid intake in cases of excessive water consumption. Step 2. Determine the severity the severity of hyponatremia often determines the treatment approach. It's classified into three categories based on serum sodium levels. Mild, sodium levels between 130 to 135. Moderate, sodium levels between 125 to 129. And severe, sodium levels below 125 milliequivalents per liter. Step 3. Fluid Restriction in mild cases, where the sodium level is only slightly below the normal range, treatment may involve fluid restriction. Reducing water intake allows the body to naturally increase sodium concentration. Step 4. Hypertonic saline solution. In cases of severe hyponatremia or when symptoms like seizures or coma are present, hypertonic saline solutions, 3% saline, may be administered intravenously. The slow infusion of hypertonic saline helps raise sodium levels gradually, reducing the risk of complications such as central pontine myelinolysis. Treatment is often guided by frequent monitoring of serum sodium levels and neurologic status. Step 5. Vasopressin Receptor Antagonists In certain cases, especially those caused by the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion, vasopressin receptor antagonists like tolvaptin may be used. These drugs help the body excrete excess water, leading to a rise in serum sodium levels. Step 6. Correction Rate and Monitoring It's crucial to correct sodium levels at a controlled and gradual rate, 
typically not exceeding 812 mL equivalents per liter in the first 24 hours to prevent complications. Frequent monitoring of serum sodium levels, urine output, and neurological status is essential during treatment to ensure safe correction and identify any adverse effects. Last, address complications. If complications such as cerebral edema have occurred, additional measures may be needed, such as osmotherapy with medications like mannitol to reduce brain swelling. Prevention is key. It's essential to stay hydrated, but don't overdo it, especially during endurance events. Listen to your body and seek medical help if you experience symptoms of hyponatremia. And there you have it, folks. A glimpse into how low sodium levels can turn your brain into a waterlogged puzzle. If you found this video enlightening, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and join our wonderful community for more captivating science content. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.